It's starting. It's starting. Yay. Hi, my name is Mrs. Sloan, and this is an AP Bio review, and we are discussing Chapter 44, Population Ecology. Once you've gone through the chapter, the summary of it is pretty, pretty quick. Um, I did make those two TikToks, and I put both of them on Instagram, which is basically all the content within about six minutes or less. Um, and the big emphasis would be just the practice problems. Um, remember, I've given you two sets of practice problems. One set, you do the practice problems, and then the key follows right afterwards. And then the second set, there's a separate document for the key. But don't forget to look at your notes where it was originally linked, because some of them have funky answers in the key. So make read what I wrote about it, okay, in your notes on population ecology. So here are the big ticket items. What is population ecology about? How is population density calculated? That's so easy, right? And what are the patterns of distribution? What types of factors affect the distribution patterns? You could tell me right now. Abiotic and? Biotic. Good. And then differentiate between abiotic and biotic. Differentiate between exponential and logistic growth curves, the survivorship curves, semilparous and iteroparous reproduction, density independent. Oh, I wrote it twice. Can you fix that? Density independent, density dependent factors, R selected versus K selected life histories, MDCs versus LDCs in age structure diagrams, use of resources, pollution and describe the process of demographic transition and be able to use equations to calculate changes in population rate of growth. And did you do your highly suggested reading and thinking? Okay, and I put three more practice problems at the end of this review, if you just wanted three more practice problems. Okay, so we'll start with, okay, so I moved it and I didn't even move it in a good spot. There we go. So we're talking about population ecology, which is the study of interactions of organisms with other organisms in population ecology. It's within their population primarily, right? Um, and with their physical environment. And if you remember, like when I first introduced this chapter, I remember when I had you do the summary on that. So density, that's the easiest one of all, right? You just take the number of individuals and whatever area, they, however they measure area, I don't care if it's square feet or hectares or miles or whatever, you just get it down to one of those. And then you just say, so you just do the math, right? Take how many organisms by that area, and then that will give you density on your distribution Remember, that's how this density is arranged. Is it arranged in clumps, right? Remember we talked about that? How likely is that for it to be clumped? Yeah. Most common, because what are you clumped around? Resources. Yeah, so that density, whatever that is for you, whether it's high density, low density, whatever, it's around those resources. Less likely is random and uniform, and we'll talk about that. And then your growth curves you know, exponential versus logistic. logistic. And then we look at the things that regulate those. What generally regulates an exponential growth curve? Density, density independent factors or density dependent factors? Density. density independent. What are things that are density independent? Weather. Weather, right? Those kind of things that doesn't have anything to do with the population size. That's telling you their environment. Is it stable or unstable usually? Unstable. unstable. So they're eat and drink for tomorrow. We may. Die. Right. They're taking advantage of this situation. Are they colonizers or competitors? Colonizers. They're colonizers. Okay. They're all in, all out, right? Whereas your logistic growth curves, those are regulated by density. What? Dependent. Dependent factors, right? Because you're leveling off, you still have your exponential time, but you're leveling off at your carrying, carrying capacity. capacity. Density dependent factors like competition. competition. Are you a colonizer or a competitor? competitor. You're a competitor because you're competing for that last spot, right? Yes. Could you also say that exponential is affected by abiotic and logistic and biotic? Sure, that would be great. I love it. Yep, that's another way to describe it. Okay, we good, good on the overview? And then it's just the math, right? To look at the way this population changes over time, this one is just gonna be R times N, right? But this one, we're gonna still do R times N, but we're gonna be concerned about this carrying capacity. So we wanna know 
How close am I to the carrying capacity? So that's why I'm going to say, okay, here's my carrying capacity. Here's my population size. Here's my, I'm just getting the percentage of my carrying capacity. And that's going to be a factor in looking at my change in N over time. Whereas this one, it's just R times N. And what is N? N is the size of your population. And what is R equal to? Yes, it's your rate of growth, and it will be your birth rate minus your death rate. Easy peasy lemon squeezy? All right. All right, all right, all right. Okay. So let's just look at these things. Right, what you were talking about, right? Abiotic factors, water, light, wind, soil, right? Versus biotic factors. We know the difference between those two. Okay, we looked at distribution, most common, meaning you have a varied environment and some spots are better than other spots. And so you clump around the best spots and you're going to have a lot of competition around those best spots. Yes? Whereas random and uniform have what in common? Uniform environment, okay? But on uniform, right, you're looking at high competition and random is low. So it's not something to memorize. Just make it make sense in your brain, right? Just make it make sense. Like, of course, that makes sense. You know, it's all okay. Um, next, we already talked about this. R is rate of increase, birth rate minus death rate. What happens if R equals a negative number? What's going to happen to your population size? It's going to go down. If it's a positive number, it's probably going to go up, right? And so that's just your change in your population over time is R times N. All right. When you study, and, and, and I'll, again, we can do a couple practice problems at the end there. When you look at your biotic potential, just think what that said. Remember we learned osmotic potential? And that was the likelihood of water going from one to another, right? The osmotic potential would go to where you had uh, osmotic pressure, right? It would go from high to low. So biotic, biotic potential, how much biology do I have here? Well, that's going to depend on when you first start having sex, how many babies, you know, when you, when you do have sex, how often do you have sex? What are the likelihood that they're going to survive? When I look at likelihood of going to survive, what am I going to be thinking about? Chance of survival. Survivorship curves, right? That's talking about this, right? Chance of you living and maturing long enough that you have offspring, right? Now, some, some organisms, they're like once and done, all in, you know, they're going to have one reproductive event. They are a fruit fly. Okay, I'm all in, right? What kind of reproduction is that? Oh, 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 yeah, they're a type three survivorship curve, but do you remember semilparis and iteroparis? So what is that? Semilparis, I'm doing it one time. Iteroparis, think iterations, okay? Iterations of the event, and so I'll do it now, and then maybe a couple years later I'll go again, and then a couple years later I'll go again, okay? That's how I remember that, all right. So um, when you look at a cohort, a cohort is traveling together through time, right? They were born in that generation, and so they're going to be competing for the same resources throughout their lifetime at the same time. And then survivorship is the probability you're going to live in order to reproduce. Again, neither strategy is better than the other. They're just two different strategies. Remember, we call it the sperm and the egg strategy. That is not in a book. I just think it makes sense to think of it like that, right? Which one of these curves it would be the sperm strategy? Type three. Type three, right? They're just like, just throw them out there. You know, as many offspring as possible. Can you care for a thousand gametes that might fertilize a thousand eggs? No, you don't have the time or the energy. Your energy is in quantity over quality. Yeah, that's how you're putting your time and energy. Whereas here, right, type one, it's more like the egg strategy, the case selected species. You're thinking about it. You're planning for it. You're investing in your young, right? And then type two, it's not, you know, it's whatever, okay? You're somewhere in between. These are just your two extremes. 
these tend to be smaller organisms, fast growing. These are your colonizers, right? Things like insects. These are large. These are iteroparous, you know, where uh, these are semilparous down here. Does that make sense? Just keep, then you're kind of grouping them. It's the same thing over again. These are your Rn. This is your Rn times K minus N over K, right? You can kind of lump them all together that way. Ask your bio buddy or whoever you're sitting next to. You good? I see you. I see you. I see you. You good? Okay. All right. So then... Um, Semilparis, you have one single event in semilparis, yeah, that's it. You're going to reproduce probably a lot. Iteroparis, you have multiple reproductive events. These are your K's, these are your R's, right? K's and your R's. Um, your two growth curves, we've talked about this. What do they have in common? First it's, then it's, then what you're seeing that's different here is some resistance. Can you still get resistance in J? Yeah. The rotten banana got thrown away. Uh, I ran out of food. Life's over. Okay. It was the rainy season. There was a lot of water and puddles. So the gnats and the mosquitoes are reproducing. Now it's dry. Okay. It's dry. So boom, my climate has changed. So they will still, but this is kind of a consistent pressure here, right? This is a pressure of, we only have so much food, only so many, thank you, Nikki, nesting sites, right? Only so much area around the water, whatever that might be. So you level off here at your carrying capacity. Feel good about that? Okay. All right. So when you are an R species, it's just R times N, right? But once you bring, you're talking about the logistic growth curve, you got to take into consideration how close you are to the carrying capacity. And then I just want you, when you're doing your calculations, I want it to make sense to you, right? So if your carrying capacity is, you know, a thousand, right? and your population size is 50, right? So here's your carrying capacity of 1,000. So now you're 950 over 1,000. That is practically what number there? One. One. So if you're very far away from your carrying capacity because your N is so small, then basically it's going to be almost R times N, just like if you were a... Um, uh, uh, our selected species. That's why, what do they have in common when the population size is small? Exponential. Exponential, because it's like it's a factor of one, okay? But as you get closer to that carrying capacity, it's going to slow down when it gets to 500. It's going to slow down when it gets to 900, because now your number is going to be closer to zero, okay? And that's what makes you slow down and you don't have that big growth rate. Okay, does that make sense to you too? Because if you logic it out, then if you ever do a problem, you're more likely to catch yourself in a mistake if you're like, wait, oh, this shouldn't have changed that much because I was so far away from my carrying capacity or this number should have changed a lot, right? Okay, as long as it is a, as long as your R right here, okay, as long as your R is a positive number or as long as you haven't gone negative here, right? Because Could you go negative here? Yeah, if you overshoot your carrying capacity, as long as it's not negative, right, then you could probably still have an addition, right? Okay. What if it's two negatives and it's going to be positive? Okay, yeah. Yes? Um, does the delta N over delta T just, like, represent change over time? Yes. It's, like, at a differential, so it means what's now is different than here, then different than here, then different than here. It's in that moment. Okay. But it will change over time. All right. Now... Um, density independent factors generally regulate what kind of growth curves? Density independent factors usually regulate exponential growth curves. Good. Okay. So the death rate um, does not change as a result of the increase in population size. It's the same percentage. doesn't matter if you're a big population or a little population, a tornado happens. Are you going to kill more people if a tornado goes into L.A. as opposed to a Tascadero, some small town up north? Yes, okay. But it wasn't a factor of the population size that the tornado came there, 
okay? It was an abiotic factor. And so these are all examples of those abiotic factors, hurricane, drought, et cetera. All right, now density dependent factors, you get more competition the closer you're gonna to get to your carrying capacity and it's more environmental resistance. resistance. Yeah, you're gonna have greater predation as the population gets larger. So things like um, competition and predation and disease and parasites, those are gonna to start to regulate your population size. Because as you get bigger, you're gonna be more likely to spread that disease or that parasite. As you get to be a larger N, there's not gonna be as much food and the competition's going to increase, okay? So then you look at life history patterns. So you can kind of group them as whether they are R-selected or they are K-selected. You can see your R-selected, they're like unstable environments, small size. The energy used to make individuals is low. That's why they have copious amounts. It doesn't cost them much, right? Um, many offspring are produced. Early maturity might be literally hours after they've hatched. Short life expectancy. Each individual reproduces only once. One huge reproductive event, right? That's semelparis. Um, density independent factors regulate them, and they're usually type 3. Put it all together for K-selected, stable, large size, Invest a lot in producing, right? How much time does a female human invest in producing her offspring? It's a little over nine months, actually. So it's like nine months, two or three weeks total time. We just simplify it to nine months, but I'll you're absolutely right. That's a lot of, lot of time. Um, less offspring are produced, late maturity, long life expectancy. Um, each individual reproduces more than once. What do we call that? Iteroparis, and then density dependent factors regulate us and they follow a type one or type two. Does that make sense? Okay, I want it to be logical for you. Yes. Type two would be like birds. Yes. Like smaller animals. Yeah, it could be, yeah. And it's kind of like uh, either the hawk got me or it didn't got, you know, unless I was like old, so I was slower. Right, or I flew into a window. It wasn't really an age factor. I just did, you know, you just cleaned the windows. Literally, when birds fly into our windows, it's terrifying. We have these big <laughs> windows in our living room, and right after my husband cleans them, I swear to you, like we've had hawks chase like pigeons, and they both go boom, boom into the window, and you're like, duh, like that. That's what you can, duh. Yeah. All right. Now, age structure diagrams. You can look at trends within these, but what you always want to remember is you've got pre-reproductive, you've got reproductive, reproductive and post-reproductive. Post and if your pre-reproductive is greater in numbers than your reproductive, reproductive your population is going to go yes. up. Yeah. And what you're looking for is zero, right? You're looking for birth rate equaling death rate. Death rate. Now, if you want to transition from uh, um, LDC, hopefully you'd want to go to LDC to MDC, not MDC to LDC. Like, well, I give up computers, okay? But <laughs> if you're going to go from uh, uh, LDC to an MDC with a warning, because what do MDCs tend to do? Harm the environment. Mm -hmm. That's like, yay for us. All right. But if you want to make that transition, one of the first things you've got to get in control is what? Death rate. You got to stop the death. How do you avoid death of children? They need to have medicine, clean drinking water. The mothers need to, and the, need to have education, right? You need to have a secure supply of food. If you can ensure those things, the death rate goes down you know, warning your population size is immediately going to go up because all those that used to be dead babies are now live babies, right? So the population is going to go up. But once that that starts, it will maintain what? Homeostasis because the birth rate will go down as the death rate, you know, unless culturally you're supposed to have a lot of babies, right? But the as the uh, death rate goes down, then you'll start to see the birth rate go down. And that's uh, the transition of an LDC to an MDC. We got on that? Mm -hmm. All right. So we already talked about this. It's the MDCs who make the hazardous waste, even though they're the smallest portion of the population. We use the most fossil fuels, the most metals, the most papers. So cautionary tale. All right. 
So then I gave you three problems right here. Um, do you, you can try them right now or you can try them when you get home, whatever you want to do. What do you want to do? Okay. So I mean, I don't want to show it to you, but the next slide, actually, you should look away so that it's on video. Okay. Look away. If you're going to solve these at home, are you looking at me? Push pause because I am going to show the answers so that they are on video. Okay. Dun, 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 dun. As long as I'm singing, don't look right now. Wait, 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 wait. Okay. Now you can look. All right. Any questions? Yes. Well, in that moment, it's telling you how many you have of it, each age group. Oh, is it that one yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I love you. Have great weekends. Thank you. You're welcome. I'm used to the type of words. You didn't.